Happy hump day and welcome to summer. <gasps> Doesn't it feel like summer has been a long time coming this year? One of the great things about summer is it's your chance to catch up on a whole heap of reading. Now, I am an absolute hoarder of books. I often get to the point where I need to stop buying books because I still have this massive pile of books that I need to read. But I often get asked, what are some books that I should read, Michelle? And so that's what I'm going to be sharing in this clip this morning. A series of books. Some of them are recent. Some of them have been around for a very long time, but all of them are worth reading. I'm going to share a couple that I have recently read and also what's on the top of my list. And so let's start with that because what's on the top of my list is obviously Brene Brown's new book, which is coming out very, very soon. And it's her Atlas of the Heart book, which is all about emotions and dealing with emotions and recognizing and accepting emotions. The next couple of books are books that I have read and absolutely loved. They've been books of the year for me. Firstly, Dasha Keltner's The Power Paradox. And it's a really fascinating look into what gives a person power and how often once we get power, we then do things that mean we end up losing the power that was bestowed upon us. The next one, Johan Hari's Lost Connections. And it's a really wonderful book because it digs into some of the causes of the depression that people can face and also exposes some unexpected solutions. And it's a real reminder that as humans, we're hardwired for connection and that without connection, we feel lost and isolated and that that impacts our mental health and well-being. Secondly, um, there's a couple of books that I've read this year that I really enjoyed. Malcolm Gladwell's Talking to Strangers and John Ronson's So You've Been Shamed. Malcolm Gladwell's book really reminds us that you know trust underpins relationships and there's a challenge when our expectations of someone, there's a mismatch between the expectations and then how they actually behave. And then that can then cause us to actually make assumptions about the person and who they are that turn out to be wrong. And with John Ronson's book, it's a real reminder of the social distress emotional dislocation and harm that's caused from shaming and yeah both of those books well well worth worth reading or do the audible audible book which is what i did for both of those next one becoming wise which is a book by krista tippett who hosts the npr show on on being and in the book she interviews astronomers neuroscientists religious leaders poets philosophers all about their views on the world and life well worth reading um, the gut some of you might have read this, it's been around for a while. So this is The Gut, the book by um, Gia Elders, Enders, which is a fascinating insight into the gut. Now, often we hear people these days talk about our gut as the third brain because our gut stores memory just as our brain does. And so it's a real reminder of the importance of taking care of our gut and some of the things that perhaps you've never thought that your gut actually did. You'll find out if you read the book. The next book is a book by Angela Duckworth, which is grit, the power of passion and perseverance. And she talks about some of the defining characteristics of success. And for her, it's not just about talent, but determination and passion. And that's what she defines as grit, is that combination of determination and passion. One of the books that I often recommend to coaching clients who are about to start new roles is Michael Watkins, The First 90 Days. This book has been on my bookshelf for years, and it was a book that I certainly turned to on many, many occasions when I was starting new roles back in my corporate days. The next book is an amazing book, um, transformational in many ways. And it's quite a tiny book, but it's one of those books that can really change how you think and see the world. And that's Viktor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning. And it's based on his own experience during his time in a World War II concentration camp. The last book is a book by Tal Ben-Shahar, um, Happier, nice note to end on. Um, so Happier, Learn the Secrets to Daily Joy and Lasting Fulfillment. Once again, it's a fairly easy book to read, it's not too long, but it just reminds you of the things that you can do to create a happier life and a happier world around you. Now, that's a long list of books, so I'm not expecting that you'll get through all of those over the summer holidays, but it's just a way to start because there's always more to learn and there's always more to do. And some of that starts with learning something new. So have fun, enjoy the books and take care. I'll see you next week.